Hello, hello everyone, Marjorie Roman here and welcome back to another episode of Let's Make You Wealthy, but the one and only Jim Du. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy to be here. And we're going to talk about um, one of the many fears that people have, which is debt. Um, so first of all, tell us what is debt for you and also what your views are on debt. Debt is merely using other people's money. That's a simple way to put debt. And when you use other people's money, they want to get paid for using their money. So they want to get interest. They want to have payments. They want to get their money back. So they want to get their principal plus their interest back. If you ever watch Shark Tank like I do, Mr. Wonderful will say, how do I get my money back? I want my money back. Well, that's what happens when you're doing debt is you're getting someone else's money to use it for a purpose. And debt can be very smart and helpful. And debt can be devastating depending on how and when it's used. So you did mention that there are like those types of that. Um, so what are some of those types that could truly help you and benefit you either as a business owner, as a regular individual, or even as, um, as an investor? Well, one type of debt, and I think one thing to ask yourself with debt is what are you going to use the money for? Mm -hmm. It's when I get asked from people who are raising money for a company, one of the questions I like to ask is what are you going to use the money for? Same thing with debt. What are you going to use the money for? Don't take out debt just to take out debt. So if you're buying an appreciating asset and the interest you're paying is lower than the anticipated growth of the asset, that can be a good use of debt. If you're using debt to buy a depreciating asset, think about like a car, that can be a poor way to use debt. Now, sometimes you need a car and that can make sense, but it's really not the best use. When you buy appreciating assets with debt, that's the best use. Mm -hmm. And then there's also access to debt when you need it. So as a business owner, you're going to want to make sure you have lines of credit and access to money in case you need it. So I remember back in 2008, I actually was sitting on the board of a bank in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I like in a perfect world that you have money at a bank where you own mm -hmm. and money at a bank where you owe. So the money, the money at the bank where you own, that's your deposits. If you have any investment accounts, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The bank where you owe or lines of credit, your mortgage, stuff like that. So why is it important to consider having those on separate banks? Well, the bank I sat on the board of was the bank I owed. And I had a line of credit against my house for $792,000. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, there was nothing on the line of credit. I didn't know what was gonna happen in 2008. When I started, mm -hmm. saw that starting to happen, I got nervous because I also lived through 2000 to 2002. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I better make sure I have enough cash just in case. So I pulled that entire line of credit, 792,000, and I put it in the other bank. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if it was at the bank where I had all my deposits, they could just grab my deposits. That's right. So I took that money out. At the next board meeting, at the next board meeting, the chief credit officer, who was a friend of mine, he came up to me and said, "Hey Jim, I noticed you pulled that line of credit." Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah." He said, Where'd, where'd that money go? I said, <laughs> wouldn't you like to know? And we both laughed because he was like, yeah, I would like to know where that money went. So I mm -hmm. kept it in a separate bank. I had that money because then if I needed that cash, I could negotiate terms with a bank I owed money. I could work out a payment plan. I had all kinds of options, but I had the money. Because mm -hmm. what did they do? They closed down all those lines of credit not that long after where no one could get the money out. Oh, wow. Luckily for us, our business did great. We didn't have a problem. So I paid off that line of credit with that money that was in the other bank once I knew I was to safety. So those kinds of uses of having lines of credit available, same thing with if you have an investment account, often you can get what's called a securities backed line of credit, SBLOC. And with that, you can actually get a line of credit against your investment portfolio. So if you mm -hmm. have an emergency, you can pull that money out. Now you just have to be careful that they have margin calls. So if usually they, you can get loaned if it's a stock portfolio, something like 60% mm -hmm. of the portfolio in a line of credit. So if that market crashes and all of a sudden they ask you for more money, you have to be prepared. But it's a way where you could get access to cash without selling your investments. That's right. And I feel like that's also another way that you can grow your portfolio even more because you're using other people's money to invest in different strategies. Now, um, you did mention that, for example, buying a car can be a, a little bit bad of a debt because it's only, only going to depreciate and you're not going to get any um, any money back from that investment. But you also see quite a bit of business owners that do invest on in vehicles. So mm -hmm. how does that strategy work? That's a great question. And so what they're, if they're investing in a vehicle and they're getting a tax write-off, it's under mm -hmm. Section 179. And if you have a vehicle that's more than 6,000 pounds and it's used for business, you can qualify for a write-off. Now, if you're using it 100% for business, and I'll caution you here, I meet entrepreneurs that sometimes say, well, I'm really only using it 
50% for business, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say I use it 100% for business. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a recipe for a problem, right? right? The IRS doesn't like those games. Right. But if you're using it 100% for business, it's more than 6,000 pounds. It qualifies under Section 179. Last year, you had 100% bonus depreciation you could use. This year, you have 80% bonus depreciation. So between the 179 and the 80% bonus depreciation, you can get a really big write-off on a 6,000 pound plus vehicle. So that's a part of the tax code. But I would say, if you really don't need the vehicle, you don't wanna do it just for the tax write-off because think about a deduction. So if you get a deduction on a dollar and you're in a 40% federal plus state tax rate, you get a deduction on a dollar, it saves you 40 cents. Mm -hmm. So you don't wanna spend the dollar to save the 40 cents if you don't need to spend the dollar. But if you need to spend the dollar, you need a vehicle for the business, it's a great way to get a tax benefit and also get a car that's gonna help your business. That's right, and at that point, uh, would that car, do you think it would be within the business credit score or would that be affecting more of the personal individual credit score from the person that is owning the business. If you buy it in the business, it's going to help the business credit score and even better if there's not a personal guarantee attached. But buying it through the business will help the business credit score. So that's where that would be a great area because you're not going to get a tax deduction on your personal vehicle, mm -hmm. but you would get a tax deduction on the right kind of vehicle, not any vehicle, but the right kind of vehicle to be used in your business. That's right. And now when it comes to that, uh, what are some other strategies that you would recommend people to look into so they can grow their portfolio faster? Their portfolio is as far as it relates to debt or just their portfolio As in far as, as it relates to investments, for example, because all of these investments, they are based off of debt because they are t and people taking off of debt, taking all of these other people's money <laughs> to, yeah. achieve, um, to be able to afford those assets. So what are some of the other ways that you would recommend your clients to look at different loans? What are some other mm -hmm. programs that they can look into so they can grow their portfolio more? So one of the ways that debt is used most is in real estate. That's one of the mm -hmm. places that it's used most often and that accentuates returns. So for example, if you have debt against a, a building or a property, mm -hmm. then you're using other people's money, but you're still getting the upside of the investment. Now that works the other way because when you have leverage, you also lose money faster on the downside. And that's where people got into trouble in 2008 where they had debt they couldn't service and they lost all their equity in the property because the value dropped. So thinking about how to use debt in your investment to accentuate the investment, but making sure you don't have so much debt that you can't weather the hard times. Mm -hmm. Another thing to think about when it comes to debt and real estate is often people will invest in real estate and then they'll do a cash out refi. So they're gonna get their principal out, but still mm -hmm. hold equity in the investment. So now they've taken all the risk off the table for their own capital, mm -hmm. but they still have opportunity to grow and make money. Now that worked really great when interest rates were really, mm -hmm. were really low, but doesn't work as well today. But mm -hmm. that is a great way in real estate doing a cash out refi to get your original investment off the mm -hmm. table. And then you can take that original investment and invest in a different deal. And you said that and that was back in the days when we had like a lower rate, but in rates like this that keep increasing every single month, basically, uh, what are some of the strategies that you would recommend to someone? One thing is really have a good understanding of what your interest rate is and what those payments are and mm -hmm. what your obligation is. And sometimes there's prepayment penalties where you can't renegotiate or you can't get refinance that loan. Mm -hmm. So you want to know all of those things. And if it's something like, let's say it's a five-year arm that resets in five years, you want to be aware of that and look at a best and worst case scenario. Uh, I believe it's likely that interest rates are not going to be this high for a mm -hmm. long time. Inflation is mitigating. Uh, I believe interest rates, the Fed is going to raise probably more this year. And then if, or eventually the Fed usually over tightens and then they'll start loosening and, and lowering rates. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you want to be in a posi position to understand how to support that debt if you have debt, but also realize that in the future you want to be prepared to take advantage when rates come back down. That's right. Um, and now when it comes to debt, you did mention that you can take on a certain amount of debt as long as you're comfortable with that, or but also make sure that you're not taking on too little debt, that you cannot even grow your portfolio. Is there something like... Unlimited debt? Can you have unlimited debt, truly? Yes, that's called the United States government. <laughs> <laughs> you could have unlimited debt if you're the United States government. And the reason why is because the government has this really fancy thing. It's called a printing press. Mm -hmm. So they can just print more money when they want more money. But you mm -hmm. and I have a limit. And that's mm -hmm. one reason why states 
and individuals can only get so much in trouble. Uh -huh. So at some point as an individual, mm -hmm. banks and other places are gonna stop issuing debt. And that's kind of your buffer zone of when mm -hmm. you can't take on more debt. The same thing with states. States can run up the bill more, but at mm -hmm. some point states start to have a problem and you can see some of the problems that California has for because of mismanagement. But at any rate, the federal government is the only thing that I know, the only institution or the only mm -hmm. people I know that can actually have unlimited debt. That's right. But they do use it um, for all the projects that they have, same as an individual would be using that, using it as leverage to be able to grow their portfolio, to be able to grow into different um projects that they may be mm. working on. Thank you so much again, Jim. And thank you to our audience. So there you have it. That is not bad as long as you use it wisely. Make sure that you have a backup plan and that you have um, points that you can use in order to um, fund your investments, in order to fund something that is truly going to generate the income that you're looking for. We're going to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.